So hey everyone, um, I'm Michelle, this is me. We're both front end engineers working for Kiva Protocol on an open source SDK for the issuance and verification of self-sovereign credentials. And so um, what does that mean? Glad you asked. <laughs> um, there are two main open source repositories for you to check out. Um, the issuer SDK allows you to issue credentials to a person and the verifier SDK allows you to run proof requests and verify that certain truths about uh, a verified credential uh, that, that was issued. And so uh, this is an interoperable system that uses the Hyperledger Aries protocol. So any verifiable credentials issued through Hyperledger Aries should be compatible with our open source tools, uh, which uh, Nate can say a little bit more about. Thanks, Michelle. Um, by the way, are you sharing your screen? Because I can't see it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, no worries. So if you know all about verifiable credentials, you can go pour yourself a cup of coffee now. Uh, but if you don't, here's a helpful diagram of the kind of system that Kiva's trying to support. It's actually the, the previous one, Michelle, um, if you don't mind. Uh, first things first, verifiable credentials in Kiva's universe are cryptographic credentials built using Hyperledger Aries. Uh, since Kiva's mission is to make a more financially inclusive world, we're mostly issuing credentials that contain biographical data about someone so that they can identify themselves to a financial institution. Think first name, last name, birthday, etc. The person holding this credential is known as a holder. The holder is issued credentials by, you guessed it, an issuer. And the nice thing about the issued credential is that they can't be forged. This helps for the holder, who doesn't need to worry about people questioning the integrity of their credential, but it's also helpful for the inspector, who will know right away if the holder has information in their credential that's been vouched for by a trustworthy issuer. And you can see issuer, holder, inspector at the top row of this, uh, this diagram. The inspector uses Aries to create a proof request. Prove to me that you are who you say you are. You have data that you say you have. They can request that a holder provide certain pieces of data and that that data satisfies certain requirements. For example, imagine an inspector wanted to make sure that a holder is over 18 years old before they can take out a loan. Uh, and if the holder's credential satisfies the proof request criteria, it will reveal data that can be used by the inspector. The actual last piece of this puzzle is in fact a registry where the status of issued credentials is tracked. If an issuing organization revokes an issued credential, the holder's presentation to the inspector will fail. Uh, this is how the whole system operates in practice. And you can see here the ID database from a trusted organization that acts as a source of truth for data that gets wrapped in credentials and then issued to holders' wallets. Uh, during Kiva's project at the Bank of Sierra Leone, the government's National Civil Registration Authority served as the ID database, for example. Uh, and these can be held with a holder's agent, in most cases a smartphone, or in guardianship, where the wallet lives in the cloud and the holder gives the cloud guardian permission to do certain things with the credential. So uh, these are two screenshots of the issuer SDK workflow. So you can just see what it looks like. But um, so you can see this in practice. Uh, we're going to give a demo of the whole thing uh, in a bit. Um, but uh, you know, the important thing with all of this is just that while we're making the platform, we came upon a few problems. Um, the first problem is, sorry, the first problem is. Um, uh, how do you do issuing and verification for more than one kind of credential? Uh, verifica uh, verifiable credentials can be issued by lots of different types of entities, and there's no standard for what information can be wrapped inside of it. So we need to have a system that can process a verifiable credential without caring who's issuing or verifying it, and without having a strong opinion about the data schema of the information contained in the verifiable credential. Um, the second problem is uh, UI customization. And so even though we have a system that can process verifiable credentials from anywhere um, uh, and, and containing anything, it won't be as viable as a product unless it can be customized by an issuer or a verifier to reflect their branding. To put simply, no other organization will use Kiva's platform if there's a big immovable Kiva logo on it. So we need, to, we need some way to make the logo and probably colors, fonts, et cetera, configurable. So this is a white label product. Um, the third problem that we have is uh, to solve is uh, authentication. So you might not want people outside of your organization to be able to hit your back end and exchange messages. So in Kiva's case, we require bear tokens within our request headers in order for requests to succeed. 
Um, you know, this isn't a universal requirement, but when you need support for auth tokens, you really do need it. So this is all well and good, uh, but you're probably thinking at this point, I thought this was a demo. Why aren't you showing me how to do this? Listener, the wait is almost over. Uh, here are the steps you'll need to take to get started. Uh, first step is create a configuration file. The second is to write an agent class. And the third step is to go pour yourself another cup of coffee because you're basically done. Uh, the configuration file is just a JSON file that has certain values predefined. For example, we support internationalization. So one of our config values is locale, which can set the language for you. Uh, controller URL base is your backend gateway URL and the verification options array is just a list of options for actually completing the issuing or verifying flow. Uh, we won't go into all the config values because the config system is still very much alive and might change. Um, now these are just static values, but the agent class is a little more in depth. There are four steps that you need to do in order to complete your ARIES process. The first is send a connection request. Then you have to check the status of that connection request until it switches to accepted. And once you've done that, send your credential offer or your approved request, and then Again, check the status of it until you get a yes or a no from your server. Um, the agent class is designed to abstract these processes so that we can solve item one from you know, one of the previous slides that we showed you, uh, source and schema. Uh, we don't know what kind of server response means rejected or accepted uh, from any given server. And we don't want to know what controller URL we should even be aiming at uh, for a request or what to do with the response when we receive them. Uh, you can see these screenshots, once we hit the key, Kiva API. Uh, Michelle, can you just hit uh, the next slide, please? Oh, right. Um, oh. Once we hit the Kiva API. Okay. Oh. That's right. I think it is this one, because I was here, and then I went here. Oh, OK. Well, um, then we're missing an image. But once we hit the Kiva API, we actually need to transform a response uh, into base 64 encoding uh, in order for our QR uh, codes to render correctly and to be useful for our uh, mobile agent, which you'll see in the demo, demo later. Um, even more simply, we have a method for saying, is the response, uh, is the definition of the response connected? And it's just checking this, the uh, response to see if certain attributes are available. And if they are, we say, yes, it's accepted. If certain attributes are another way, we say it's rejected. And then the UI can change based on those responses. Um, so armed with this knowledge, what should your final product look like? And I'll have Michelle field this one because she's the senior engineer and I badly need my own cup of coffee now. So take it away, Michelle. All right. So we have a demo, uh, which is probably what you came here for. Um, so I'm just going to uh, start it up. Uh, we have credential issuance to a mobile app, uh, wallet app. Um, we also have other authentication methods like um, we were using this to take uh, fingerprints, so biometric data can be used as an authentication method um, or SMS OTP. But I think this is the clearest way to show uh, what exactly is going on because we have a wallet over here on the right, which is like your held on your phone. And then there's a web SDK where we're just uh, filling out some of this uh, information like a, a PII. Uh, personally identifiable information. Michelle, uh, are you sharing your screen? Is it? I'm sorry. This is, um, I don't know why the um, the screen share cut out. There we go. Okay. <laughs> sorry about that. So should I just, I guess I can just go back here. Um, we actually have 30 minutes, so I think we'll be OK. Oh, great. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but you heard everything I said, right? Yes. Okay, great. So, uh, I can actually just go go through this um, and actually talk about the consent screen. So, we have a consent screen here. Um, it has all of our personally identifiable information that we um, we ask the user if they are willing to share that with the institution that wants uh, to issue this particular credential. Um, and so, you know, we have the ability to uh, capture an image or upload an image, um, fill out the credential with the person's PII. I've done here. I should actually full screen this. Um, and then we get a QR code which allows this mobile wallet on the right uh, to form a connection with 
the uh, web SDK and make secure messages between uh, between the mobile device and the web SDK. And so then uh, the credential pops up and you hit accept. Um, and then it pops up in the wallet and you can see all of the uh, fields here. And then when it comes to verification, uh, it's a similar sort of workflow, but you know we, we use the verifier tool, uh, grab consent from the user, and then uh, scan a QR code to form a connection again, because um, we want that consent every single time. Um, and then we just run the proof request, and then uh, it shows up on the mobile app side, but it also shows up on the uh, web SDK as well. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we, we built our own registry and this is not part of the uh, open source suite, but um, it's, it's that uh, Aries protocol supports. So, uh, you know, we have uh, credential revocation and a few other features kind of in the works. So next is uh, open questions. So since this is an open source white label project, um, these configuration files make it a lot easier. Uh, the configuration files that Nate was talking about earlier make it a lot easier to integrate what we have to fit the needs of any institution that would need a working credential system for their own use case. Um, but the work of doing this integration uh, with that institution is not removed completely. Uh, I would say that you know, for, for our pilot in Sierra Leone, we were able to take our existing code and apply it to a legacy banking system um, and perform EKYC in a community bank in Sierra Leone within a matter of two weeks. But we've moved forward since then and um, we have made the integration process happen even more quickly for future cases. And so um, my guess is it'll be uh, quite a bit less than two weeks, but we haven't actually um, we haven't tested this on the ground. We have tested it internally. Um, and so, uh, you know, currently you can't just import your own agent and have it work. Um, that's a no. Uh, but you can take the existing backend that Kiva has available, or you can extend our code to work with your own agent. And you can add uh, steps into our workflows and uh, change the code if you like. The system also supports multiple languages. I think Nate mentioned that before, but um, you can only use one language per deployment. And then, um, so you can't switch languages using a dropdown menu, for example. Uh, we, we have created different credentials and proof types, such as checking whether a credentials issue date was before or after January, 1st, or if you wanted to check the age of a person and issue driver licenses, for example, you'd be able to do that. Um, without disclosing the attribute itself. So you don't need to know a person's age, but you may just want to know that they're above 21, for example. Um, so, so that would be possible, or seeing if a, a particular credential has been revoked or not. But there's still a lot of work left to be done to streamline the process of uh, creating new credential types as well. So um, as we move forward with this open source project, we welcome any contributions towards these efforts. And so as we said it uh, from the beginning, you should feel free to check out these repos and we truly mean that. <laughs> Please check them out and start playing with them. And until then, thanks for watching our demo. Um, so we finished with uh, quite, quite a bit of time to... So oh. Helen actually, responded we're actually one minute before the end of our session so okay great <laughs> nailed it nailed it right on time <laughs> awesome um sorry that there's not very much time for questions but um as we said please uh check out the github repos and uh feel free to reach out to me and michelle um on you know the web somewhere we'll be happy to field questions so Thank you so much for attending, everyone.